All right, folks, let's pop some pimples with Photoshop. I couldn't find a picture of one of my friends with any blemishes on their face. I've apparently touched them all up, or they have perfect skin, like I do. Otherwise, I would have taken a picture of myself. But I, you know, despite many years of psoriasis, I have never had any issues with my face. Um, so, unfortunately, I can't embarrass myself or anyone I know. So I found this kid on Instructables on how to, who wrote a post on how to pop a pimple, so thank you, kid. I don't know who you are, but you're welcome to our video. Um, what you can do, there's so many ways you can remove face issues in Photoshop, and in general, you want to use this for good and not for making someone look better than they look. You, you know, everyone sometimes gets a pimple or has something on their face or there's a piece of dust in the lens or whatever you want to remove something from the photo and well the uh, you know you want people to look their best so there are a couple ways you can do that the healing brush is one of the most obvious um, and so is the clone stamp tool the clone stamp tool is the old-fashioned way and we're gonna start with that because you know this is this is how most of us learned back in the day how to remove pimples from a photo and the healing brush works in the same way now the nice thing about the clone stamp is it is present in many image editors. So if you're not a Photoshop user, you probably can do this in something else. So the way the clone stamp works is by setting a source on the photo. And you do that by holding the Alt or Option key and clicking on that source. Now, let's say we're going to remove this pimple. This skin over here kind of looks like the skin by the pimple or the whatever that is. So I'm going to I'm going to use that as the source. I'm holding down Alt Option clicking and then I'm going to move that over, and you can see it's already kind of covering it up. Now, look at that. That's a little too light, because I picked. you can see exactly where that cloned right there. Now, I'm going to fix this, use a slightly darker source, and then, you know, I can pull from some surrounding areas to kind of add in, that doesn't look good, um, add in some texture so it doesn't, it doesn't seem completely out of place. But you can see the kind of problems that you run into when sourcing existing other stuff, because then it's it, you have to find a patch of skin that's about the same. Like there, that one worked really well. Um, and then removing this sort of thing gets even harder, because you're dealing with right around the lip, and you don't want to mess up the lip. And so we're just sourcing all of this stuff. And it can take a while you know, to do this and get it exactly how you want. Um, and sometimes you have to go in, because this spot's still a little dark, go in with the, um, the dodge tool here and brighten up the mid-tones in that area so it matches the rest of the skin. You have to get the size just right, but you can see now that looks a lot more even. So that's, you know, that's how you can do it the old-fashioned way and get pretty good results. However, we have something called the healing brush, which is much more effective at not making it look like you're cloning an identical area. For example, I'm just going to clone this area right next to whatever that is and click it and then it when when you source it you can see how it changes after you click same thing when I do here option click and then and then paint over and then the healing brush takes care of the rest one more neat thing if you have Photoshop CS5 or later at the moment CS5 or CS5 and a half or something is the latest version but that will probably change soon so you can use something called content aware fill in this or later versions unless they get rid of that feature for some reason and what you have to do is make a selection since this is circular, we should use a circular selection. I'm just going to click on the marquee tool here, hold down, and then select the elliptical marquee tool. And let's get rid of this guy, actually. You want to select as tightly as you can around the area you want to remove. Then you press the shift key and the delete key, and you get the option of a content aware fill. That's what we want. Press OK. And Photoshop just is like, hey, I don't, you don't want that there? Fine, I'll get rid of it. And you can go ahead and just keep doing this with additional and you can see how it can sometimes screw up, so you might want to go back to the healing brush, which does a very good job. The healing brush is really probably the best tool to remove small things. If I wanted to remove one of these, like one of the nostrils on this kid's face, for example, the content aware fill would really be better at that. Um, not perfect, though. Anyway, those are your three options for removing blemishes. Use them as you see fit. Sometimes the clone stamp will do you the best job. Um, we'll do the best job for you when the healing brush will sometimes seem like it's going to do a really good job and then alter things. And you'll be like, no, 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 I wanted it. You could have just used the identical uh, part that I sourced and that would have looked great. And so in that case, use the 
clone stamp when you want to just copy another area of the face or whatever. Um, and then use the healing brush, you know, for, for smaller things. And then when you have something bigger, like a tree in the middle of the field that you want to get rid of for whatever reason, then the content aware fill is probably more suited for that. Although, really, uh, touch up skills and a lot of practice will beat any computer automated feature at this time. So, the more you practice, the better you get, which is why it's really great to use the clone stamp and the dodge tool and, you know, try to do everything manually so you understand how it works. So you can start cleaning up, and you know, we're not done here, but it is, you know, a, an improvement because we started with, uh, started somewhere around here. That's, uh, I guess that's, we can't get all the way back. Or do I have that? No? Yeah, there we go. Started with that, and we went to there, so that's a pretty good improvement. And so with a little work, obviously, pretty quickly, you can get, um, you, you, can, you can start cleaning up a face and making it look nice, and you can remove other things too, so... Um, use use these tools as they are best suited. Um, make your best judgments and practice, practice, practice because you can get really good at it if you do it a lot.